Hi there, Johnny here with Johnny Watson Gaming and in today's video we're going to be speed painting some Dodo Riders with non-metallic metals. Catch you after this. Okay, so today I am painting these Goblin Dodo Riders. Uh, they are from Alternative Armies. Uh, I'll put a link above at the top corner there for you to go to go and see the video that I did on the review of these guys. So the idea today is to speed paint these as quick as possible and I'm going to be using a non-metallic metal uh, scheme on the armour. So first of all I gave these guys a primer of black spray and then a dusting with grey primer just so I can see the details on the model. The first base coat to the armour was a Prussian blue by, by Vallejo and then I've come in with a goblin green to the head uh, and then I'll wet blend that in with a pr Prussian blue again onto the beak with a bit of purple at the end just to give it some contrast uh, and make it look a little bit more uh, interesting. So to tackle the dodo itself I, I, uh, I decided to go down the route of uh, wet blending all the colours. I wanted a nice uh, bright uh, colour scheme on these on these dodos. Uh, I found a bit of artwork on, online which I thought looked really nice so I was just copying the colour schemes on that. Uh, and just to get the transitions between the, the really stark colours I, I thought I'll go with a wet blend rather than a, a sort of a layer or a glazing uh, technique on this one. Also the aim of the game here is speed painting so the wet blending really is allowing me to do this as quick as possible. I can then bash out the rest of these guys uh, relatively quickly getting the same results on each. So for clarity I'm using a Warlord Purple by Vallejo uh, to do the body and then on the underneath I'm just wet blending that in with a Royal Purple by Vallejo with 50-50 mix between that and the Warlord Purple. Uh, I then come in on the feet, I add Prussian blue to the feet and then just wet blend that up into the purple to get that nice transition. So just going to come in with a few more base colours before I carry on with the armour. Uh, here I'm putting on a scarlet red to any areas that are going to be red, so for the example those horns and then the uh, weapon handle. That really, oh, I do this with all my Oathmark uh, models just to tie them in as part of the army. And a bone white on that skull that sits on the helmet. Any leather areas get a coating of beastie brown. Okay, so we're going to start the non metallic metal work on the armor. Uh, first of all, I'm going to come in and sketch all the areas where I want there to be a reflection on the armor. Now, these guys are only tabletop quality, so I'm not working hard at all trying to work out where the light's going to hit. I'm simply looking around the model, where will it look cool, put in a bit of white. So for clarity then, I'm using a dead white by Vallejo, but any white would do for this process. Okay, so the next step then, I'm coming in now with a 9 to 1 ratio mix of white and Prussian blue in that order. So a very light Prussian blue. And I am simply going over all the white areas, just colouring them in. That's all I'm doing. So to all the exposed Prussian blue areas, I'm going to come in with a 9 to 1 ratio mix of Prussian blue and dead white. I'm going to fill them in, leaving the Prussian blue in the deepest recesses. Okay, so now we're going to start creating our contrast which then sells the effect for the non-metallic metals. I'm coming in now with a 6 to 1 ratio of dead white and Prussian blue. And I'm placing this in between the darkest and lightest areas. So where the 9 to 1 ratios both meet, this has just been, I'm drawing a nice little line in between them.
So I'm going to repeat that process again, but this time I'm going to come in with a 50-50 mix of dead white and Prussian blue. What this does is slowly build up those transitions between the darkest to the lightest, which will then give you the non-metallic effect that we're looking for. Same process again, but this time we're on the opposite side of the scale. We are now at a six to one Prussian blue to one white. And if you wanted to stop here on your non-metallic metals, it will still look good. It will still look like they are non-metallic metals. However, I like to just go a little bit further. Um, although this is speed painting, this part of the process does take a bit of time. So what I do, is give myself, I say, right, I'll only go over the model three times on each stage, and that way it keeps the process down. Because you, if you really wanted to smooth these out properly, you could do this for ages. And what I'm doing here is simply coming in with the same colors I came in earlier, but on the where the colors meet, or where the transitions meet, sorry, I'm coming with small little dots with a glaze consistency of each of the colors and then blending out the, uh, the, two, the two areas of which they meet. So just to reiterate, I'm just coming in with fine little dots here. Uh, this is with the 50-50 mix and I'm just blending out those transitions. Okay, so final process on the non-metallic metals uh, for these guys. And I'm just going to come in with a glaze uh, of the Prussian blue with a tiny bit of black. So it's probably, let's say, uh, again, nine to one ratio of Prussian blue and black. And I'm just glazing into the shadows with that uh, to help give that contrast. Because again, where the non-metallic cells is through contrast. Okay, with that done, coming in for the final details on the model, just using an Agrax Earth shade over uh, the horns and the skull there, and then highlighting them up. I came in with a green wash to the head, just to try and give a bit of depth to the dodo. Came in with a little wash to the dodo's body as well. On hindsight, I wish I hadn't done this. Um, I didn't really like the result of it that much, but it, it didn't come out too bad in the end. So then come back in with the highlights to the dodo. Um, first of all here, highlights to the body. I'm using a pure uh, Warlord Purple. And then I come in with a 50-50 mix of Warlord Purple and Ice Yellow just to finish the highlight up on that. So to highlight the dodo's head, I'm using an Escapina Green by Vallejo Game Color, and then finishing it off with a Livery Green by Vallejo Game Color as well. For the blade on the weapon, I'm using a Metal Color Steel by Vallejo. Just a one quick highlight to the leather areas with a Japanese uniform by Vallejo. And a quick highlight to the weapon uh, with a model air color steel. And here's the final result. If you're interested in how I do the shields, uh, there's a video linked at the top corner here, which I go into a bit more detail on them. Hopefully this video shows that even when speed painting, non-metallic metals are definitely still a viable option. They don't have to look perfect to look good. These guys are most certainly not perfect, but they do look cool. Please leave your comments below. I'd love to know what you think. I'll just let these guys turn for a bit. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for taking the time to watch the video. 
if you're enjoying what the channel is doing and you have not done so already, please hit that subscribe button. But in the meantime, guys, stay safe.